Hello everyone, welcome back to Debating for America's Youth. Today we're going to do two things. First, we're going to watch Luke Talisky, the 2018 NSDA National Champion in Congressional Debate for the Senate. We're going to watch his speech, and I'm going to break down what makes his speech so good and why he was able to use that speech to win. And then I'm going to break down one of my favorite speeches I used at a Tournament of Champions qualifying tournament, a national circuit tournament, uh, the speech that helped me break to semifinals at that tournament, and then we're going to wrap it up. So make sure to stay to the end to watch my breakdown of my speech, and thank you so much for watching. Enjoy from here on out. The United States can determine its foreign policy blueprint for the Northern Triangle from El Salvador's national motto, liberty, union, and God. Let's assess the validity of this legislation on those three metrics. Principally, liberty. Pass today's legislation to free civilians from the vice grips of gangs. Across the region, vicious gangs like MS-13 are committing atrocious acts of violence against innocent civilians. Insight Crime, a Colombian newspaper focused on exposing organized crime, found that in 2017 alone, there were more than 12 thousand murders of innocent civilians. And Danielle Renwick of the Council on Foreign Relations argues in January of this year that due to corruption, more than 95% of crimes in the region go unpunished. That's where I draw the line and ask you to support this legislation, which let me clarify what it does. It mandates that within 180 days of passage, the Secretary of State has to present a plan of action to Congress on how we're going to fix the problem. It will consist of, of enhanced cooperation and information sharing with local officials to identify individuals who are involved in narcotics, human rights abuses, and corruption. Mr. Shaw, you ask in cross-examination for an example of how this has worked. Renwick furthers that when a similar international presence was established in Guatemala in 2009, in just three years, impunity of crime decreased by 27%. Today's legislation is a similar policy that enacts international cooperation to crack down on gang violence and reinvigorate liberty in the region. Mr. Anchetta, today's debate is not about snapping fingers. It's about policy. We should treat it as such. Secondly, union. Pass this bill to strengthen government institutions. Remember the statistic from earlier about how 95% of crimes go unpunished. That occurs because through corruption, gangs are able to buy their way out of prosecution. So citizens start losing their trust in political institutions. Because if your government can't protect you from being murdered, you're not going to trust your government. Eric Olson of the Latin American program at the Woodrow Wilson International Center in 2015 explains that in El Salvador, as people become more and more frustrated with crime, violence, and corruption, more than 50% of the population has reverted back to supporting authoritarianism. As the strongest democracy on the planet, let's, let us reverse that trend and bolster democracy through the application of, of American anti-corruption resources. With this bill, we can reconcile the irreconcilable. We can surmount the unsurmountable. And we can conceive of the inconceivable. Thirdly, God. The negation is going to need an act of divine intervention to prove why we shouldn't pass. Thank you, Speaker. Three minutes, six seconds. Okay, so now that you've just watched Luke Talisky's speech, now let's break down some of the parts and analyze what makes his speech so good to the judges and also to anyone who's watching. So first, he uses an introduction that's relevant to the Northern Triangle, which is the bill that's being debated. He uses an introduction from El Salvador. This can be very, very smart. If you don't use a stock introduction that you can use for any speech, sometimes judges can get more interested. A lot of times, if everyone's giving um, speech introductions that don't really relate to anything, it can get boring. So using this introduction is very good. But I think that the reason why this introduction is so good is it lays out the framework for the debate. He lays out his two main contentions, and he sets up his conclusion all in his introduction, which saves him time and also ties his entire speech together, which is very smart. Liberty, union, and God. And he contention one, contention two, and conclusion. So let's look at his first con uh, contention. 
liberty. So he breaks it down very, very smartly. And this is how all you should break down your contentions. First, he goes with claim, warrant, data, impact, refutation. So his claim, he talks about how the gangs have a vice grip on the region. Then he does his warrant, how he this connects to his data and what's going to happen. He talks about how gangs are committing atrocious acts of violence. Then for his data, he uses two pieces of data in his first contention. The first one is a local source, so something local in the region. So then he could go, look, here's the region. But then he uses a broader source that's not, maybe has the biases that the local source does, but the local source is able to specifically look at the specific region, and the broader one's able to look at a broader implication without the biases, but without the specific insight of being in the region. So both of these data points back each other up and is very, very smart. Then he impacts it. He talks about how these gangs are very bad for the people in the region. Impacts are often overlooked, but if you don't impact it with what's wrong with what's going on or what is going to happen with this bill, it's often bad. And he actually explains the bill. He explains what's going to happen with this bill, and that's very smart. And finally, he refutes people. He acknowledges that other people have points in the rounds, and he points out a specific uh, case made by another opponent, and then he brings up a specific example of why they're wrong in another similar country. This is very smart. And then in his second contention, he actually connects it back to his first contention, tying it together, making it a more of a fluid speech. He talks about a statistic saying 50% turn to authoritarian forms of government, and he uses it, the impact is to support democracy. So he connects the, here's gang violence, this is bad just because it's gang violence, but also, here's why it's also bad, because people turn to authoritarian like forms of government. And then in conclusion, he ties it together with a very witty, but connected to the introduction conclusion. So it's able to all flow together. This is a very good speech. And if any of you are trying to do congressional debate, watch this speech, learn how he uses his words, learn how he makes his arguments. He gets impactful and, and, and stresses points, but he also explains them in a very analytical and logical way. He ties it very together very, very good. So definitely check this out. But next I'm gonna analyze my speech I gave at a Tournament of Champions qualifying tournament.